easy to grow a wonder in the kitchen. Tender fruits are nearly round, mildly sweet flavor, creamy texture, plump and variably ribbed. There's a nice poetry to seed catalog descriptions, but there's also a lot of technical terms in there. So we're gonna talk about the meaning of some of those words and how they relate to your garden. There's a few different types of seeds that you'll see advertised. Organic is one. So organic seeds have been grown in organic conditions on a farm. So that means no chemical fertilizers, pesticides, or herbicides, as well as a whole host of other variables. This one's listed as USDA organic certified, whereas this one just says organic lettuce seed. Another thing you'll see is non-GMO project. You are not going to accidentally buy any genetically modified or GMO seeds. Those are highly regulated, they're very expensive, and they're for agricultural producers. If you find something that doesn't say non-GMO project certified, it doesn't mean it's GMO. It's not something that you have to worry about. Heirloom seeds is another thing you see listed. Heirloom generally refers to plants, different types of cultivars that have been grown for a long time. Some people say before the 1950s, some people say 50 years. I'm not sure that there's an actual rule, but often they have a historical or cultural significance to an area, which is why they still are grown. You'll see some seeds listed as treated seeds. I actually have some here that I ordered by accident. You can see these pea seeds are pink. So these are treated with a fungicide. This will just keep them from rotting when they go in the ground. Pelleted seeds are not the same as treated seeds. For smaller seeds like lettuce seeds, what they are is they're actually a small clay coating that turns it into a seed that is about the size of a radish seed. So you end up with something that's easier to handle, that's easier to plant out, it's not necessary if you're not planting out a whole ton of plants, but if you're planning to save seeds from your garden, it's important to know if the plant is open pollinated or if it's a hybrid. So open pollinated plants, you could save the seeds from and then they will produce the same seeds the next year. They pollinate naturally in whatever mechanism the plant uses. It's different for all different types. If it's a hybrid plant, it's been more specifically crossbred by agronomists who have picked out certain traits from a couple of different cultivars and put them together. That plant will not produce seed that will produce a new plant. The seeds may be sterile or they may just produce something totally different than the plant that you started with. So you don't want to save seeds from hybrids. Hybrids are also often more expensive because of the technology that goes into them. And you want to just make sure you notice how many seeds you're getting. In the past, I've ordered pepper seeds that were hybrids and then realized I only got 10 seeds in my envelope. Another word that's related to that is parthenocarpic or self-fertile. You're going to see that listed in association with growing in greenhouses. If you're growing cucumbers or tomato in a greenhouse, there may not be as many pollinating insects around. And so something that's parthenocarpic is self-fertile. They'll often grow without seeds and they don't need to be fertilized by another plant in order to produce fruit. Seed catalogs will give you a lot of information about timing as well. DTM, days to maturity, how many days it will take between when the plant is either directly seeded in the ground or a transplant is put in the ground. So I use them as a comparison point just to understand if I'm looking for something that's fast or something that's slow. Otherwise, I'm not going to really take that information and assume that it's going to be true in my garden. Any perennial plants that you're ordering will also say hardy till zone two to four or hardy to zone six. It'll list them in there. Note that the USDA zones are different than the Canadian zones. So check which zone you're in and then check which country your catalog comes from. So that's how cold the plant can get over the winter. So you'll also see a lot of growth habits listed on here. So these are different ways that the plant grows and it's good to match these to the conditions that you want in your garden. You'll see different things like spicy bush basil, is does well in containers as well as the garden. The plants are small and dome shaped, so they're small. Dwarf, semi-dwarf, climbing, those are words that will be used. Another big distinction here is between determinant and indeterminate. Those terms are usually used when talking about tomatoes. Determinant means that the plant will grow to a certain size and it will produce fruit and seeds, but then when it's produced enough seeds that it's sort of finished its life cycle and thinks that it's passed that on, it will stop and it will die. Indeterminate, they will continue to grow fruit and they will continue to produce seeds until the weather conditions change around them. It gets too cold, they dry out, and then they will die. The days get too short, something like that. The word you'll see a lot is resistance. 
So there's a few different types of resistance you'll see. These parsleys say that it has intermediate resistance to downy mildew. Resistance to uh, diseases is very common. You'll see that a lot in tomatoes. Sometimes it will say something specific, like resistant to tomato tobacco mosaic virus. Sometimes it will be general. It will say good resistance package. That's on. Bolt resistance is another one that you see often. Something that can grow as the weather gets warm without going to seed. If you've ever grown cilantro, I find is an especially common one. It'll grow really well in the cooler weather, but as soon as you get a hot spell, it'll just send up a giant amount of flowers and the leaves are not as good to eat. Also crack resistant. Tomatoes uh, will often crack, especially if they get too much water, if it's a wet year at a certain point in time when the fruit are forming, the skin will actually crack. So crack resistance just means that it's less likely to happen. Um, they've been bred to have a thicker skin and more of an ability to, to take on that excess water. Field holding, how long something can sit in the field without needing to be picked. Maybe that's important if you wanna grow, you know, a whole bunch of head lettuces and sort of leave them and pick them one at a time. Growth rate is often said, slow versus fast growth rate, intermediate growth rate, grows well early, grows well late, likes heat, likes cold. You'll see all of these descriptive terms. Uniformity, I often see. So that's good if you're doing some preserving projects where you want beets that are all the same size, or if you're selling them in a market and you want them to be a similar size and shape. And then there's all the other words. Perfectly complements, strong handles, holds color, unique coloration, weight, speed, and crunch. These are the fun ones. And then you've got all kinds of words that have to do with the flavors. Rich flavor, tart flavor, sweet flavor. Maybe a little bit arbitrary, but also pretty exciting to think about. Have a good time reading catalogs and hopefully this will help you understand what they're talking about. I'm just going to go back to the poetry now. Attractive dark green Savoy leaves on tall upright heads, good sweet flavor.